All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. As always, thank you for tuning in. Today, we are going to do the high horsepower rear wheel drive tune. Um, and I'm looking forward to this one. I think this is uh, probably the most sought after stuff that people are looking for. You know, the normal cars that people are going to use in public lobbies, uh, drift zones, um, anything regarding points drifting. Um, it's what I'm good at. It's what I'm used to. Um, I can do tandem. I have fun with it, but points is where I'm usually going. Um, so we went through on the last video quite a, a lot. I'm going to probably just kind of be a little quick on this one. Um, so I'm going to stick with the stock engine. Uh, I'm going to bump up the turbo and I'm going to put the wide body kit on it because it looks badass. The rear wing, probably going to go with something dramatic. Ooh, that's dramatic. All right, we're going to go with that one. The hood, you know, whatever you like. It doesn't really matter. Um, as far as the tires go, I'm going to stick with the drift tire. And I'm going to pump it all the way up in the back in tire size. The fronts, I'm going to leave alone. Maybe I'll bump them up a couple. You know, we're going to test it on the mountain today, see how it feels. As far as rims go, I said last time, I always like the works. I'm going to see if I can find, I think I'm going to go with a set of Workmeisters. Bump up the tires a little, you know, all aesthetics at this point. The drivetrain, we're going to fully upgrade. I'm going to go with a 7-speed. I always go with a 7-speed. Um... I don't know if I really have a reason for it, but it's more so I just like the gearing. It seems to flow really well. The drift differential, again, settings-based. Um, as far as actual performance, none of the drift or rally or any of the other differentials do any different. Any road bars, drift suspension. We're going to check and see, so no front change on the roll cage, so we're going to hold off on that, otherwise it's just adding weight. The engine, of course, the stock 2JZ uh, with the turbo upgrade is going to make about 1600 horsepower. It gets a little crazy, um, and if you feel like you're spinning too much, if you feel like you can't control it, you can always try to go to like a race tire. You know, I really never get to that point where I feel like it's out of control. But I do know that some people like a little bit faster, a little grippier cars. Um, back and out of here, we're going to install all that. It comes to an 865 S1. I may put in a downhill or maybe an uphill. I feel like I never see uphills enough. I'm going to post a lap or two in a public lobby. You know, kind of show what this does points-wise against other people. You know, you can see it on the mountain by yourself. But I think it's more fun to do against other people to see how other people react. And, you know, it ends up giving you a decent following if you're pretty good at it. So we're going to jump into the tuning menu. As far as the tire pressure, because of how much horsepower we have, I'm going to put it pretty far down. Um, that is something that I will revisit, though, if I feel like it's not gripping. As far as the seven speed, then the reason why I like it is because it's quick. Um, when I get into the tuning menu, you can see over here, everything's already pretty laid out nicely. Um, I end up being in sixth and seventh gear for the most part, and I stretch it, especially with this 2JZ, all the way to the very end at 260 miles an hour. When those wheels are spinning, they can really make a lot of power. We're going to put about 1.5 in tow and about 0.5 in the back. <clears throat> Reason being is because of how much power this has. I also want a lot of grip in that back. Um, for more information on the alignment settings, I, I suggest visiting the first video where I really kind of go into a little bit more information. On the anti roll bars, on a high horsepower car, I'm going to try to set everything soft. I'm really going for points, I'm really going for slide. And I really want to set everything the same, especially since I don't really have a reason to try and break out the back. It's going to be spinning all the time. 
Rebound stiffness, again, same thing. We're going to bring it soft, everything soft. And as I always say, bump, this, bump stiffness all the way to zero. The arrow, I'm not going to mess with. It doesn't really do too much in the way of drifting. Set the brakes all the way to the front. 0% pressure in the rear. 200% pressure overall. Differential, 100 acceleration and zero on the D-cell. All right, so we're at the bottom of the mountain. I turned on the telemetry so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing. A little bit of a janky turn, but... Overall, um, as far as the normal drifting goes, and the reason I like to use high horsepower cars when it comes to high points runs, is because you can make a lot of the corners and stretch a lot of corners that you normally wouldn't be able to. Um, the reason I'm running the uphill is I never really see people do the uphill. You know, you see the downhill pretty often. I think the uphill is a fun run, and, and I think it's definitely more challenging. You know, as you can see on the steering, I, it's not just a full left or right all the time. You kind of have to bounce it back and forth. If you're on a wheel, it's completely different. You know, you're going to be able to hold it at a certain angle. But you will feel it. I mean, you can see the driver turning back and forth. You can see this steering meter in the top right there. You know, kind of um, trying just to balance out the car. I do a lot of um, normal transfers and transitions that, you know, you don't have to use the clutch and the e-brake, you know, if you want to and you want to do really hard turns, you know, so you're coming up and you're coming real hard out of a turn, you can grab the clutch and the e-brake and that will spin you around faster. Um, it may not be as smooth though, you know, it's not, like if you're going for a high points run or something like that, you're going to want to do that because it means that you're driving straight for less amount of time. So now I'm in seventh gear, as you can see. Um, the one issue with this car in particular, um, and any cars with very big turbos on them, is actually turbo lag. It's pretty noticeable. Um, if you end up trying to... Um, excuse me. If you end up trying to come around a corner and you're in too high of a gear, it's going to bog down. You've got to be quick to shift down. Um, and that's why I don't recommend doing automatic, is because, you know, the car decides and you don't have an option. You know, it's really wherever you decide, or wherever the car decides to put you in the rev range. Um, being in manual or manual with clutch gives you full motion over the car. So I'm going to shift up here, we're going to try and shoot this all the way up. And you really want to be easy on the throttle sometimes. You know, it doesn't need to be full power all the time, the car is going to slide. And we set that up for that, you know, leaving the front tire pressure a little higher. Let's your front end get around easier, and with 1600 horsepower, the back is going to be moving. You want to be very early with your steering um, inputs. You know, I start to turn my wheels, if you can tell, even before I'm into the next corner. Because you want to be ready for that counter steer. If you're not counter steering before you get there, you're going to spin. You know, there's just no way around it. And it takes a lot of practice, and it, and it takes some time to get used to. You know, I wanted to do that first video um, with the low horsepower car, because those are the cars that you want to learn on. You know, you don't want to learn on, and, it, and I'm not saying you can't, but you don't want to learn on a high 1600 horsepower car that's super unforgiving. If you can learn on a tight track how to control the car and control where you're putting it, the longer corners and the stretches and stuff like that just comes from more power and more speed. So we're going to shift into 7th. 
you can carry this all the way. It's t a little tough in rear wheel drive. Um, but overall, not a bad run. Um, I don't know what we got. Let me look. No, it doesn't say. But um, I'm also going to probably run a public lobby. I'm going to leave the telemetry off for that. And I will be back with you guys in one moment. 